Hello everyone. Today I'll give a presentation about our study of a network-based comparative framework to study the evolutionary patterns of the proteome in plant phylogeny. The purpose of the comparative genomics study could be summarized as two things: so finding genetic elements which are evolutionarily conserved and making differences. In comparative functional genomic studies, measure and compare large-scale molecular profiles such as transcriptome and proteome across the multiple species. In such studies, we aim to answer questions like which genetic elements are involved in the control of the phenotype and how they are regulated or interacting to each other. So the majority of comparative studies have focused on the transcriptome and comparative studies of proteome are few, especially in plants. This is because there are a number of existing challenges in the comparative proteomic study in the plant, such as the complexity of plant genomics, presence of highly abundant proteins, and the lack of reliable functional annotations. But due to these difficulties, global analysis in plants have been late, especially for the protein. And however, but however, this is changing though very recently, and there have been a few comparative proteome studies published. So our collaborator at Udom Medicine, Professor Josh Kuhn, and his former postdoc, Harold Marks, have optimized the critical parameters to enable quantitative proteome measurement at a global scale from plant species. So using this approach, together with Professor Zhang Michel's group, we profile the plant species spanning 450 million years of the evolution including moss, rice, corn, potato, vegetable, and arabesis, and obtained 43,000 of the protein values covering more than 25% of all species. And to enable the integrative analysis with our protein data, we obtained RNA-seq transcriptome data of our plant species from public database. Specifically, we used a suite of tools named Curse and Frost, developed by our collaborator, Professor Klaus van der Poel's group, to systematically collect gene expression from sequence read archive database. So to analyze these comparative data, we developed a computational pipeline, which has three main steps. In the first step, we collect our data and annotations and map sequence orthology across the species. And we do two types of the multi-task clustering define modules at both protein and mRNA, mRNA co-expression level. And finally, we interpret the modules in systematic way, such as looking at their general properties and functional enrichment, and additionally, identifying the gene set with phylogenetic interesting patterns and performing the integrative network analysis. To gain insight into the specific processes that are conserved or diverged in species at the protein level, we developed the algorithm proteome to infer groups of proteins with a similar level across the species. The algorithm proteome is a modified version of the algorithm, and it is a multi-species expression clustering method that uses phylogenetic tree relationship and proteome expression. So it consists of transition probabilities part for each branch in the trees that models the probabilistic propagation of a modular segment and emission models at the extended species node that models the expression levels by Gaussian mixture. The nice feature of the algorithm protein is that the learning framework automatically provides matching between the identified expression-based modules across the species. So in other words, genes having the same modular ID across the species corresponds to the same biological modules. We perform the algorithm proteome and obtain the proteome modules with seven different expression levels, from low to high expression in the species-specific roles, and simultaneously matched across the species in each module column in the heat map plot back here. So from here, we see there is a significant conservation in proteome expression level across the species. And after defining modules, we compare those modules to see how they are conserved, how conserved they are across the species by computing the significance of overlap across all pairs of the modules from two species. We depict this as a small square image like this, and so that the low expression modules are matched at top left and the higher expression modules are at the bottom right, and the diagonal line shows the conservation of modules of the same ID 
where is the off diagonal shows the divergence in the expression level. We performed the analysis of module similarity at different levels of the gene duplication, and we found that the low conservation happens in only lowly expressed modules, or in other words, highly expressed proteins are more conserved. And furthermore, divergent off diagonal boxes are increasing as we increase the level of gene duplication which shows that the gene duplication is associated with the divergence of gene across the species. Furthermore, functional enrichment analysis on the modules shows that the highly expressed proteins are enriched for the genetic metabolic processes likely important for all plant species, whereas the less expressed modules are enriched for the processes such as trans host translation modification or signaling that could regulate the protein level in the condition-specific manner. We next identify the clinical specific gene set, which are defined as a genes that changes their module across the phylogeny in a clade or species-specific manner. So for this, we generated the protein, protein module assignment profile of an alpha group at all node points of our phylogeny tree, and we clustered them to define the gene set. So each cluster was a gene set exhibiting a clade specific expression pattern. For example, I'm showing you a gene set where the most is specifically unregulated while it is repressed in the other monocot or dicot plant species. We also found uh, several other cases that are representing examples of the monocot specific or dicot specific patterns as well. And once we get the clade specific gene set, we assess their functions by performing enrichment analysis to the known geo processes per the species manner. So, geo enrichment analysis identifies uh, identified a uh, large number of processes for these gene sets. So, to investigate the largest scale patterns in the enrichment of a clade specific gene set, we apply the non negative matrix factorization based by clustering to the matrix of profiles consisting counts for species showing the enrichment for those geo processes. And this analysis grouped both gene set and associated processes terms into 10 subgroups and enabled us to characterize the representative process terms such like groups of capturing a cell wall biogenesis or transcription regulation or something like that. However, it represents only a small fraction of our gene set which might be due to the lack of the comprehensive functional annotation in less stable plant species. Expand the scope of our clade specific gene set to, more, to the more molecular processes. We decided to infer gene expression modules or subnetwork, which are often associated with the specific molecular pathways and therefore offer a robust basis to interpret the gene set identified using our protein data. So to define more expression modules jointly across the six species, we developed a multi-task graph clustering algorithm named Muscari. And Muscari uses, again, the phylogenetic relationship and the species-specific co-expression graphs as input and to learn the matched subnetworks across the six species. So using Muscari, on our six plant transcription compendia data, we identified the 20 different expression modules or EM subnetworks. Since each expression module specifies the subnetwork of a possible biological context, we sought to leverage these EMs for the interpretation of our genes. So our hypothesis was if the association between the clade specific genes and a biological process is valid, then the genes in the clade specific genes should be more strongly connected to the genes in the process which could be mediated by the EM subnetwork. And this can be evaluated statistically based on the global distance upon the gene network and can be enumerated by network diffusion kernel. So we use this approach to assign the function to our clade specific gene set and found that many of the annotated protein processes were statistically more connected to the clade specific gene set then genes not annotated for the clade specific gene set. So, this type of analysis identifies processes for several clade specific gene set of interesting pattern. So, for example, here, a most specific gene set linked specifically to the most 
unique on organelle formation related processes. We also found a substantial increase in the proportion of the clinical specific genes that associated with the biological processes by this indirect association method, which suggests that although the genes in the clinical specific genes are not directly annotated with the process, they are strongly connected to the genes annotated with the process. So far, taken together, we generated a novel data set of plant protein levels in six plant species and we developed a comprehensive computational framework to systematically analyze this data. And by, this, by the analysis, we identified groups of protein with the parents of expression across the species by using the multitask learning. And moreover, we identified the clinical specific gene set based on the protein module assignment. And we were able to expand our knowledge of the function of the clinical specific, clinical specific gene set by integrative network-based analysis of protein and transcriptome. Yeah, I'd like to thank to our review members and also our collaborators in this project. And this study could be fulfilled by the assistant of our funding resources, especially NSF and James McDonald Foundation. Thank you for your attention. All right. So thanks for that great talk, uh, you know. Um, is that how I pronounce your name? Is it? No, it's the Chuna. Anyway, I was, I was right the first time. <laughs> Sorry about. That. Um, so that was a fantastic talk. Uh, great Thanks. method to integrate uh, gene expression proteome data. Uh, I'm going to start with an audience question and then um, maybe ask a few of my own if we don't get any more. Um, so the first question is: uh, What are the advantages of non-negative matrix factorization in analyzing large-scale patterns? Have you explored other methods? Yeah, so actually we tried to analyze the gene, the enrichment of the functional pathways of our clade specific gene set. But as I mentioned earlier, the gene set, actually the geo annotations for the plant species are very rare. And actually most of our focus on the model organism, which is like Arabidopsis or rice. So so for the other types of the other species of the cases, the enrichment are very rare. So the, the we could find only a small amount of the uh, functional enrichment for those species. So that was the reason why we took those the NMF based approaches. And these NMF based approaches are taking the making the groups of similar having the similar patterns in both gene set way and the functional enrichment way. So by doing that, we could say we could we could find the uh, uh, the representative processes of the subgroups. And yeah, and also we could yeah find found the, the, the and we yeah, that's it, yeah. Great, awesome. Um so I'll ask I'll ask two questions. Um mm -hmm. The first one is, um, so it's very interesting that you're able to integrate uh, expression with proteome data. The, the question I have is, uh, do you need uh, the gene expression data and the protein expression data to be in similar conditions? Uh, or can they be in all kinds of different conditions? Oh, yeah. Cell types, for example. So actually, this study is based on the whole plant species, whole plant extract of the species. So, so yeah, so we yeah we did not use we didn't use the uh the, the tissue specific or condition specific way, but I think yeah, the applying the specific context specific uh, approach would be more advantageous for the finding more specific uh, pathways or gene sets from our other cool. species, yeah. Great, great. Um, one other question is, um, is your model making any assumptions about um, um, similarity of modules between expression and protein levels? Uh, do you see, or in other words, do you see examples where um, like a gene expression module made up of a collection of genes is very different from the corresponding uh, protein levels because as you know like gene expression doesn't always correlate with protein levels right so right. Um, 
is your is your model able to account for that kind of discordance in some cases between expression and protein levels or does it expect modules to be conserved between the two different types of data actually that is a very good question so actually the the reason why we reason i study we reason i we study this study would be the we want to know that which genes with the similar protein levels are co-spread or and they are have a, they having a, a similarity between the protein level and the expression level as well. And additionally, it's main, in the paper, in the paper actually this we have we are have updated this paper and we in the paper we additionally examine the, whether the gene pairs of the protein modules and the co-expression co the, the specific uh, create specific gene sets are quick pressed or or not, and we tested the statistical test of the, how they are quick pressed or not, and we found that majority of the proteins are we found the protein modules are quick pressed in the in transcriptal level as well, and also the create specific gene set about roughly forty percent of the create specific gene sets are quick pressed as well. So we think, yeah, they have some correlation between the protein level and the co-expression, the, the transcriptional level. Excellent. Um, thank you so much, Juno. Um, thank you. Great talk.